Alright, today we've got another couple of 80 series Land Cruisers in. Both of them were factory 1FZ autos. This one will be getting the 6.2 LS3 6L80 combo. So we'll have to get this motor and box out of there. Also that radiator is having a bit of a leak from the top seam, so we'll get a new one as well. And over here we've already fitted a 6 litre 6L80 combo to this one. The customers supplied this alley radiator and radius fab airbox and snorkel. And since we've already finished this one, we might as well start her up and have a listen. This one's just the standard L98 with no cam, and we'll see how that matches up against this cammed LS3 we'll be fitting to the other one. We've already removed the motor and box and modified the engine mount, and fitted the heat shields and moved all of the fuel lines. If you'd like to see how I do that, I go over it in the last manual Land Cruiser video. I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner for that one. But now we've got the engine bay prepped up for the motor and box to go in. I won't bother going over the engine mount brackets as I did that in the manual Land Cruiser video as well, but we'll quickly go over the transfer case adapter kit for the 6L80. I've already removed the extension housing off this 6L80 and I've cut the threaded part off the back of the output shaft. And once I cut that off, I've also polished up the back of the shaft so there's no cut marks for it to crack. Also, this top rib on the gearbox needs to be ground back for the adapter to fit. The O-ring is no longer required and it's just silicon that seals this flange. And now I've got all of that done, we can bolt up this transfer case adapter. I've got the motor and box in now, and you can see this transfer case adapter just sits on the standard cross member and rubber. And for the auto, we don't need to slot the cross member holes like we do on the manual. You might have noticed we've already got the shifter cable and bracket set up, so we'll go over that on the bench. For the gear shifter, I like to retain the factory one because it just looks a lot neater inside the car. So I'll remove the shifter, and the only modification we're going to have to make to this one is drilling a small hole. Using the top of the larger hole for reference, 10mm above, we need to drill a 5mm hole. And once that's drilled, we can refit the shifter and console. For the shifter cable, we'll be using this one from FlexiDrive. It's a push-pull style cable with these little rod ends, similar to what you'd get in a B&M shifter. The part number is IS83BB-1500, and that's 1.5 meters long. And over here, we have all of the cable brackets. Now I've got the CNC plasma, it's not very hard to make these, so if anyone wants a set, just send me a message. We'll get this fitted back up, and then we'll go over the exhaust. For the exhaust, we'll be using the same off-the-shelf 3-inch cap back that we used in the manual video. This kit comes with all the hardware and gaskets that you need, and we've cut it off in front of the muffler and welded on this 2-bolt flange. We'll get this fitted up now and go over the front half because that is different to the manual. This is the mild steel variant for the automatics. The extractors themselves have a different outlet location than the manual variant. It comes with a wipe pipe, but it doesn't suit the 6L80, so we'll have to modify that slightly. And as always, we'll be using a set of MLS exhaust manifold gaskets. So we'll get this fitted up and modify the wipe pipe and go over how we did it. So I've got the extractors on and the wipe pipe modified. The problem was this bend here was interfering with the drive shaft. So we had to turn that on a slightly different angle and we've also extended it to move it away from the drain plug so when you pull that out it doesn't just spew all over the exhaust. And I made up a simple cap pipe to join it into the rest of the system. Moving on to the fuel system, we'll be using another Raceworks EP501 fuel pump and since it was a petrol sender we've wired it into the factory power lug. The power wire is never long enough so you're better off running a new piece of wire down to the plug. Over here you can see the red wire I've taken out is just shy of reaching. And I'll be using this same 3 port regulator mounted to the firewall. We've got an 8mm inlet, a 10mm to the rail and a 6mm for a return. It'll all be plumbed up the same as the manual and since I just did that video we won't go over that again here. We've picked up a new radiator since that other one was leaking and we fitted a set of VZSS fans. I made up some simple brackets to mount the fans at the top and the bottom just clips into the factory clips on the radiator. So we'll get this in and plumbed up and move on to the wiring. Here we have another standalone loom from Alan Gibbs at CalMaker. This side of things is almost the same as the manual, except for over here where it interfaces to the body harness, we've got an extra wire for the starter trigger, as well as the fuel pump, ignition, taco and engine light wire. And this plug will interface with the tap up, tap down module. And the rest of the loom will just interface with the engine like normal. And we'll hook up our fans, our alternator power and our starter trigger. 
I'll get this fitted up now and we'll go over everything we've just had a look at. With the wiring loom fitted, we're pretty close to being done now. You can see we've got the radiator and fans in, along with the cooling system all plumbed up. I've used all the same hoses that we did in the manual video. The only difference is the water pump outlet is on the other side, and that results in a slightly shorter top hose. Over on the other side, you can see we've got all of the power steering plumbed up, along with the factory carbon canister that goes to the purge solenoid, as well as the fuel rig mounted to the firewall. And we've got that plumbed up to the fuel rail and down to the factory fuel lines. We've still got to make up the intake and a few other things, but we'll go back to the body loom side of things because that is quite different to the manual variant. This is the 1FZ factory auto loom and I've stripped all of the tape and cable sleeving off. The grey plugs that go to the ECU won't be needed, but the white ones that go to the body harness are. Out of all of the plugs that went to the engine, we'll need to keep this one here that went to the coolant temp sensor and all of the earth wires. Over here we have the gear selection switch. These wires here control the lights on the centre of the dash as well as the reverse lights. And all the rest of this goes down to the transfer case, so we'll be keeping that as well. So we'll go and thin this harness out and de-pin everything we don't need and we'll come back. Alright, I've cut out everything that we don't need and it looks a lot better. On this side we have the loom that goes down to the transfer case which we retain. And on the other side of that plug we've got our leftover earth wires and we've fished out this green wire which goes to the coolant temp sensor. Over here we have our black with a white trace and black with a red trace for our starter trigger. And in this last plug we have all of the wires for the dash lights and reverse light. And in here we have the taco wire which we'll show you later. So I'll go and tape and sleeve this back up and we'll have a quick look. Alright, we've got our section that goes down to the transfer case all taped back up. As well as our coolant temp and earth wires. And over here we have our other two white plugs that go into the body harness. And the starter trigger wires that will interface with Alan's harness. Now I've got that finished up and looking nice and neat, we'll fit it to the car and we'll show you how to wire it up. On the back of the driver's side head is where you fit the factory coolant temp sensor from the 1FZ and that's where we plug that green wire in we were looking at before. Down on the driver's side inner guard is where we'll find the wiring for the oil pressure switch. The brown and the white wire will need to be extended and run to the back of the engine. And you can see at the back of the engine where we've mounted the 1FZ oil pressure sender we've just run the wires up to here. On the inside of the car we've got this white plug we fitted to Alan's harness. The pink is the ignition wire and this purple goes off to the two starter trigger wires. Here we have the plug for the dash and reverse lights. The black wire in the corner is for the taco. This is one of the differences to the manual whereas this black wire is in the other bigger plug. The red and black wire that comes from this plug is for the reverse lights and I've wired that into a relay which is powered by this yellow wire. The black wire is the earth trigger which comes from the tap up tap down module. On the other side of the plug it'll be this purple wire in the corner. I'll be using another one of these modules supplied by Allen that we use for most of the auto conversions. These come with a little LCD screen which displays what gear you're in along with RPM, coolant temp, oil pressure and trans and intake temps. I've got the old overdrive button wired up to switch it between sports and normal mode and down here we have the switch for the tap up tap down. Once it's in sports mode you can click it up or down to enable the manual shift. And then to get out of manual mode you can just hit the overdrive switch and it'll put it back into normal shift operation. I found a switch that fits in the console so we'll get that fitted back up and then we'll have to take the dash out and do the taco mod to the back of that. Once I've done that and got the console back in I'll also have to secure all of this up behind the dash and the ECU will go in the glove box. I've got the dash out of the car now and I've taken off the plastic fascia along with removing the three screws from the back of the taco. That allows me just to pull the taco out and I've already made the modification and we've jumped these two terminals that bypasses one of the resistors and allows it to operate on the signal from the E38. Now I've got that done we can put the dash back together and fit it back to the car. Alright we've got all the wiring done now and we've made up an intake for it. We've also sent it down the road and got the aircon hoses made. I didn't talk about this much earlier, but this is an LS3 6.2 litre and we fitted a BCM 532 cam kit. So it'll be interesting to see how much power it makes against the standard L98 with the same 6L80 combo. So let's fire it up and have a listen.
Back on the inside of the car now, you can see on the LCD screen we've got our taco and all of our temps. And when I move the gear selector, you can see it change on the screen. And we put it into sports mode. And we can select what gear we want from the switch on the side of the console. We can take it out of manual mode by just hitting the overdrive button on the side of the shifter. I prefer to do it this way rather than fitting the VE shifter just because it looks a little bit more tidy. Having a look at the dash you can see we've got our coolant temp and oil pressure working. Along with the taco which does take a little bit of adjustment in the tune but not a lot. The speedo runs off the transfer case loom so if all goes well that should work along with the battery and the fuel gauge. Now we've gone over all of that we can finally put it on the dyno and see what it makes against this LS2. Alright, we made 337 horsepower. It's quite nice for an LS3 with a cam in it. We made 380 foot pound of torque. Obviously the 6L80 is going to take some horsepower and it's going to make a little bit less than the manual ones. We'll strap down the other one with the L98 and we'll see how much that makes. Alright, we made 280 horsepower with a bit over 320 foot-pound of torque. Not too bad considering the manual ones are making just over 300 with the same combo. So we'll get it off the dyno and have one last look outside before we go. Alright, we got both of these finished up now and ready to give back to the customers. I'm sure they'll both be pretty happy. If I was going to have one, I'd definitely have the 6-speed auto. They're really nice having those short ratios, great for towing and just generally driving around. They're also quite a strong gearbox. We regularly put like five, 600 horsepower through them with no problem. But if you stuck around to the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed. Next up will be a GULSA 6L90 combo. So make sure you subscribe and stick around for that. And as always, thanks for watching.